Welcome to the executive talk, uh, Ramon Vega. I think it's fair to say that you had a highly unusual career as a football player. You were very successful, uh, more than 20 caps for the Swiss national team. Then you went to the UK, you played in, in Italy, in Scotland as well. But then you became a highly successful businessman as well. If I ask you now, uh, which career was more gratifying, the one as a footballer or the one as a, as a, as a financial specialist? First of all, thank you for having me today here. It's a good question as well at the same time. Um, it's very unusual, and it also happened very unusual at the same time, you know. Um, my gratitude was actually to Switzerland as well because I had a certain education been given during my football career, you know. Uh, at the same time, actually, both businesses are very exciting. One, frankly saying, is more the kid's dream. Mm -hmm. I'd been a football That's player. That's a footballer, yeah. And now, uh, actually, I really, I was very lucky to have it. And even today, I'm thinking back, it's the most beautiful sport in the world, I have to be honest, you know. And uh, if every kid has that chance to do it, uh, he should do it and, and do it to the full because it's very rewarding, it's, uh, it's exciting, you learn quite a lot out of that sport. But at the same time, the business side is also very exciting. Uh, it's driven, it's very competitive, where actually the sports side has a very similarity. I mean, that, that's the interesting part, because both lives and both worlds have a lot of parallels. I mean, if, if, if you think about it and you say, you know, competitiveness is one, uh, wanting to win probably is, is another one, being driven as well. Uh, in that regard, how did the world as a football player or the life as a football player prepare you for the, let's say, the afterlife or the second life, which is, which is the longer life for you as well? Well, you know, the, the post-career as a football player is a very difficult one. Uh, not just football player, but in general for a sports uh, professional. Because uh, you, you are in a little bubble as a football player or as a sports professional. You, everything's done for you. You're really living the dream in a way, you know. You're playing in front of 80,000 people. Uh, the media's behind you. you. You really get used to be exposed. So that kind of teaches you going post career to go into a world of potentially less exposed but in a different way, okay? So the competitive side is coming naturally because you're a sportsman, you really want to win. Uh, people say there are friendly games. There's no existing friendly games because you're going to, to win even against the opponent because you want to prove the coach, you want to prove the teammates that you are a valuable player to be part of it. And in, in, in pretty much in the business world, it really prepares you to to go into to say, listen, you are ready to fight against any kind of hurdles that business world actually does give you because it's a very difficult and also tough world out there. And there are no world. friendly games either. There's no friendly game at all. <laughs> I'm telling you that now here. There is very, very sharp, very lots of sharks out as well at the same time. So you need to be extremely, I would say, even more careful than the football side. The football is the natural side, natural competitive. That's a beautiful, in a way, you have a naivety mm -hmm. bringing over. And you learn very, very fast in the business world that you don't have to be naive. You had to learn quite quickly in the business world as well, because of course there were some cliches around, probably some, some, some people saying, well, he was a football player. How, how can I trust my money with him? Or, or you know, how, how, how can I be sure that he's, he's, he's as business savvy as he was a good uh, football player? In that regard, uh, you had to, you had to uh, overcome quite some obstacles. And I know you, you talked about it, that in the beginning it, it was quite hard because you had to yeah. fight against these kind of, kind of cliches, right? Exactly. And perceptions. Well, I think, I think you're right. My toughest part is to, to convince the normal business world, I businessman, or in the finance world as such, that this perception from a football player, yeah, uneducated, but potentially, how the hell can he go involved in finance, etc. It was very, very tough. Even you had the best product in your hands, mm. they will still potentially not even believe you or potentially not taking you in, okay? Uh, and, and I've realized very, very fast, it's kind of very thick world as well within the finance world. Mm because it's kind of a lot of marketing at the same time, and the products potentially are less quality than actually they're supposed to be. And I realized that you have to either do, to learn very quick the language within that world, and, but also, in my case, I really need to do the technical side of it, you know? How the, you know, all the trading side, the kind of the volume, the economic side point of, can you really can challenge either any fund manager, potentially, uh, or his 
potentially might invest into your fund or you want to sell your product, you know? So it was tough. Uh, Did you want to be better than the rest just to prove a point as well? Did you feel I think that the, sport, the sports side, Frank Zhang, really was giving me that kind of ambition to say, you know what? I can feel already, once he's talking to me, he's really looking down to you, kind of, saying, saying, what is he actually doing in this meeting? He hasn't potentially got a clue. He may not even listen to you. Right. The, there's the, the ignorant side point of, of the other side, you know? They're all in, potentially not even listen to you. They don't even respect you that side. So I needed to go really the hard way and say, I need to be better than you, frankly saying, actually, I need to know potentially even more than you and actually have an argument with potentially some questions they had. And once I achieved that, then suddenly the turn to, uh, arrived. But it was not over a month. It was over years. I mean, to be, to be fair, uh, you know, there aren't that many football players who do become uh, asset managers and, and do become involved in the, the finance industry. So there, there, there must be something you know, special about you anyway. But is it true that already as a... I mean, when, when you were a young football player, you worked at Credit Suisse, uh, you had the chance here in Zurich to, to do both, mm -hmm. to have, to have a, a career as a football player and to learn a, a craft, which is, which is the finance industry, which probably or obviously gave you a kind of a head start. But is it true that, that you were always also throughout your uh, professional career, you were the one in the front of the bus, not playing cards and not uh, uh, watching television, but you were interested in financial questions and you were actually advising your, your, uh, your team players, your team colleagues as well in financial regards, etc. Well, uh, partly true, you know, um, because obviously you have to be regulated. You can't just advise on the bus. All right. <laughs> I was still a player. Yeah. Uh, I think I think it's key to say uh, I was very fortunate uh, here in Zurich uh, to grow up and play with Grasshopper Zurich at that time. I was one of the pilot kind of players. I think you were the first one. First one, yeah, first one, yeah. with the other ones there afterwards following, to doing an apprenticeship around the football players, you know, not just playing football, but also learn other industry. In this case, it was the finance and business. So I done my, my degree here doing was my playing football career. It was very good. Frank is saying, when I was 17, 18 years, I wanted to play football. I was not thinking into the future, to be honest, you know. But if I look back now, I'm very thankful that actually Grasshoppers actually at that time done such a project and the pilot with me, because if I look back today, I wouldn't do what I actually do today or I actually had the knowledge to go after my career into the finance world, you know. Uh, saying that, yes, of course, I was always very interested doing my career about the world economics, what's going on around us. You need to be a little bit global. When you start to be an international football player, you have to know a little bit what's going around you. Because you, again, going back, football player is a very big bubble. Yeah, and they're very pampered and they, it's everything's done Everything's done, done for, them, for you right? and you really being screened and scanned around it. You, the outside world is not even reality anymore, you know? And I try to be as much as reality kind of be on the two feet on, your, on the ground as possible. That means you need to know what's going on outside the football world, you know? And that was giving me also an advantage that you know a little bit more than everybody else a little bit. Doesn't mean I want to be arrogant about it, but I also wanted to help them because I know some of the players didn't have the chance, like myself, to do potentially a degree within the industry I finance. They needed help, and they still need to their help. In that regard, was it an advantage growing up in, in Switzerland, where even if, you, if, if you're a professional sportsman, uh, there's always that kind of the, the, the dual education and, and, and a school is important. I know for your family, mm -hmm. it was important as well. Did you do, do something uh, besides football as well? As, in, as in, in other countries, it's just football. Parents are just pushing their, their, their children not to do anything else because they say, if, if he makes it in football, we all make it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. Uh, I think the, 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 the Swiss education system is one of the best in the world. And I was very fortunate to born and grow up in Switzerland in terms, I mean, we're talking here, one of the richest country in the world. And uh, without that, one of the best education in the world at the same time. Why should you not use this when you have it front of your doorstep, okay? And at the same time, the football side uh, was giving me the global aspect to be in, uh, in, in the world of Switzerland, because Switzerland is a very small country, uh, believes in themselves extremely well because they have quality. But I came as an immigrant parents, mm -hmm. uh, Spanish origin, 
But myself, I was born in Switzerland, I grew up in Switzerland, I had the fortune to do all my education here, and that was my luck as well at the same time. And I actually used that to my advantage, what I'm doing today. Speaking of that, uh, uh, you spoke about it in, in earlier interviews as well, that uh, you always had to kind of, kind of fight a little bit to be respected. As, as, first of all, as a child from, from Spanish immigrants, uh, to become a Swiss national player, then certainly as a Swiss player uh, playing in the, in the Premier League and playing in, 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 in foreign, uh, foreign leagues. Then again, as the footballer becoming a, a, a financial advisor and an asset manager, uh, has that been a kind of a red thread through your career that you always had to prove uh, that, that you know, you're, you're maybe better than people think? <laughs> pretty much. Uh, the question uh, uh, I'm just thinking of, actually pretty much it is like that. Because yeah. when I'm just listening to you, kind of the path I was going through it, as a very young boy, or even I was born in Switzerland, of course I have Spanish origin. So you always have that kind of the immigrant scenario touch where they're thinking, okay, you're Spanish origin, but you're born in Switzerland. So you had that fight to kind of, to be part of Switzerland. And that was one first part, but the football has given me that kind of social respect again, because for me, football, you're part of everybody again. And once you play for the Swiss national team, it was the pride of Switzerland that you play for Switzerland as well, and myself as well. I was very proud. And you proud. were very proud. I was very that, proud right? to be a Swiss national team. Even today, I'm, I'm pretty much the ex-Swiss national team player, you know. And I think it's, it's beautiful to, to have that respect also from the Swiss person. But at the beginning, I needed to earn that respect yeah. because of was in my background. So that mentality was growing also during my international career. So when I was an ex-Swiss international, I was to going to Italy or in Syria or Tottenham in this case. I was the ex-Swiss international, so I was a foreigner in England as a Swiss national. So I was already there, you need to gain the respect again because the foreigners always potential might earn a little bit more, they're more in the limelight, so and the English are a little bit more jealous, but because you're a foreigner and you potentially take one of their places away, you know? So there you have to gain your respect again and fight for it. But it came natural. It, was, it, 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 didn't, it didn't came kind of, oh, goodness me, I need to do it again. It pretty much it came in a very natural way and it's a kind of nice way as well because the outcome came extremely good because you get respected. Mm -hmm. But if you're a fighter at your core, does that mean that you, you, uh, you lose your business like that as well? Are you a shock, for example, when it comes to, to finances and when it comes to, to uh, advising people? I mean, are, are you the fighter there as well? Either you swim with the shark or you fight against the shark. Okay, that's your motto. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very important to know that, you know. I think, uh, I think it's, it's, it's important. On the business side, there's a common sense you have to bring in as well sometimes. And, and again, in the business side, is, I can identify with the football side. When we're talking about the balloon side, do, you are in a little balloon, you're, you have everything, you've got the great restaurants, you've got these. The finance world is somehow guts in the similarity and you potentially losing the touch, the, the reality touch within, you know. As long as you don't lose that and you have the common sense, that gives you the kind of the ground basis to build up business. Because mm -hmm. it happens to everybody that you're pretty much losing that kind of reality check because you're either surrounded by people or just living in the high life style but never really looking at the ground basic stuff. And that's important to really bring with you in business side. You always said that you, you, you lead your business as a kind of a, almost a traditional, I would say almost a traditional Swiss account manager, mm -hmm. that you want to be in touch with your clients, mm -hmm. You want them to know what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to be transparent. Mm -hmm. You also talked about, you know, sometimes uh, uh, as a fund manager, you might not know what you get into as a client. Mm -hmm. uh, in that regard, are you typical Swiss that you say uh, it's, it's transparency, it's uh, a respect, it's a kind of a, a, a trust thing as well? Well, I think the, the, the Swiss world gives you kind of that education, the kind of the ethics behind, you know, that you have to be transparent, uh, you have to assert an integrity within uh, managing money as well, you know. So I think what, what I done post crisis of the fund management industry 2008, where pretty much it was kind of 
abused, I would say, the industry at that time. There are some still very good quality people out there who are doing a fantastic job. Let's, we, we have to admit this as well. But at the same time, people are used, abused this, this in, potential the industry. So if you come in with a tool where you have a very transparent, open platform where the client, in a way, needs to understand as well what they actually do with the money. Because within the financial industry, there's a language which potentially some of the clients might not even understand mm -hmm. and maybe get Which confused. might be on purpose uh, for, uh, for certain uh, yeah, bankers. Yeah, I well. didn't say that, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is true. Because I think, I think it's important you need to educate the clients as well a little bit. It doesn't need to be an expert, but he needs to know the basics of it. You know, if, if you understand that, then you can actually approach with different products, with different potentially portfolio scenarios, where it's a much easier conversation with the client instead here is your product, mm -hmm. here is your IABC portfolio, let's click it up and that's it. Some clients say, I don't have a clue about it, I don't, that's your job, etc. Yes, it's right, but I say, no, it's not right actually. You do have to understand mm -hmm. what we do, and I think it's important to do that. Do you think sometimes you, 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 could, have, you could have done even better if, if you hadn't had that, that, that ethical approach or that you, you, know, you want the client to understand and you want to be as transparent as possible. We know there are, you know, there are people who are actually uh, doing not as, you know, as, as much as you would do and who are highly successful as well. Is it, is it, was it always the case that you, know, you, you wanted to look into the mirror and, and, and kind of respect who you see there? Was that a kind of a... a well, I think it's a, it's a two-way scenario. I think it's very important that I can walk out to the street and I don't have to look at my shoulders, frankly saying, you know. Yeah. I think my life is too precious to pretty much short thinking and short gain by not having a long implication, let's say, in this case, you know. I think the success comes only if you have a long-term view behind. If that goes from zero to 100, it's great, but if it goes to zero to 10, yeah. it's also great. You still are in the industry, you still be respected in the long term. And maybe you have a breakthrough where the people actually want to be part of such a platform, you know? So in my, in my case, I don't look the competitors out there and compete with them because that will be, frankly saying, insane mm -hmm. because there are so many out there. The volumes are much different than potentially in my case, you know? Uh, if you start to compete against them, then you're already losing, frankly saying. You start to have to think about your own philosophy, your own way of ethics, the way to do it, and the integrity. And you start, you keep this, and you keep this, this discipline, then I think there's always a future. But in business, it's a risk always there. Does that mean that you want to, to stay let's say that way, in a, in a little niche in a way, or, or almost like a boutique uh, asset management company. I think at one point you had, you had about two billion uh, uh, in assets that you, uh, you managed. I don't know, was there ever a thinking or, or you know, a wish that oh, I might go up to 15, 20, 30, 50, or did you never think like that or in this? In no, these? I don't think that, that way, to be honest with you. I don't think that I want to gain a level. I think it has to come natural. Yeah. I think. If you think you want to be there, you start to sell yourself too much. Mm -hmm. I think uh, if you do the product as such, as a good, they come coming to you. And you, see, you don't have to follow the money, the money has to follow you. And I think it might take longer, because that's what it is, because you do potentially more the ground basics right. But as long as the, f the money follows you, or not you the money, then you're on the right path. And the money has followed you so far. So far, yes, of course, but you need to work for that as well in, in the same time because uh, I think you need to keep it, you need to still work, you need to be un innovative in the same time. The business doesn't stop today, it goes every day is a different direction it, and you have always the risk, whatever happens, you know, because you've got the political interventions, economic interventions, uh, depends where to location you are actually doing the business. All of these aspects you have to really uh, in, in calculated in, in the risk of, of running a business, you know. Uh, speaking of business, politics, economy and money, uh, that brings me to FIFA. Uh, you were in the running for, 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 for the president of FIFA three years ago. Um, 
that was that was a, a point where where uh, I had the impression Ramon Liga he wants to get back into into football he wants to get back into a, a football association because it's a lot of business plus it's football so the two worlds that you like and 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 love mm -hmm. um, what would you have done as a, as as FIFA president that maybe the, the current one doesn't doesn't do <laughs> no I, I don't think so what the question is what, what I would have done as a FIFA president I think I have to correct a little bit as well in the same time. The football side, I never really left, mm -hmm. frankly saying, you know. What benefited me, it was to go into the financial industry, but at the same time, the football industry was still calling me back mm -hmm. because suddenly the football industry started to gain an interest on the business side, the economic side, the TV rights. Suddenly, we're talking the last 15, 20 years, if not quadruple, if 10 times more. Yeah, it's a billion know? industry uh, so in it's, the UK it's, alone. It's, right? it's, it's a business where now, we're talking to the billions. Yeah. So what happened in, in a kind of very natural way, because you're in the financial industry, and the financial industry was the driving force behind all these TV rights as well, and private equity, etc. When you have the DNA as a football player, you do know the grassroots, how you went through all the steps, all the way up as an international player. Our, the main guys within the football industry was actually calling me up in terms of certain advice, mm -hmm. and I consult them, and federation-wise, government-wise, uh, in terms of how to developments in the infrastructure, how to pretty much invest the money within the football industry as well, uh, acquisition of clubs, of course, as well. So I was never stadiums really, as well. I think stadium well, yeah. financing, yeah. Uh, naming rights, all the kind of what suddenly the modern football in the last 15 years. Uh, has developed, and it's good because football needs money all the time because it's good for the young kids. Uh, we're taking them off the street. It's a social aspect as well in the same time. But again, I'm not. Going, I'm coming back. I, I was never left to football actually. Mm -hmm. I was in, but in the business side point of view, more on the financial side, and on the technical side. So I have the luck. I had the DNA from grassroots point of view as being an ex-player, but now an expert in the finance as well, where it's a good merge together to, to advise major federations and, 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 and football clubs to go the right direction. And again, it sounds almost like a perfect fit for, for FIFA, no? Well, uh, it's not a perfect fit for FIFA as such, it's a perfect fit for football. Because mm -hmm. I think it's important, we're addressing the football side. For me, it's important the legacy within the football side uh, uh, than anything else. I think the position is secondary. I think uh, it's very important what can you bring to the table, what kind of other value you can bring to the table. And, and, and this is a general thing for any football federations or football government body who wants to really improve the development side of football. Because that's, I think, the day is missing that conversation, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's it's interesting when I when I hear you speak. It's really like it, it it's so obvious and it's so clear that you know football and and the business environment has a lot to do and and that's something you're 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 interested in as well because you you, you do programs like I think it's called from 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 pitch to the boardroom. Board yes. So to really see the parallels and to really see again that the the that that these two worlds aren't that that different. Uh, if I ask you, you know what 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 what's what's the main parallel between being a footballer or being a, a coach, uh, being a, a, a in in, in the football manager industry, or, fund or a man yeah, exactly. or fund manager, manager you know? on the pitch, yeah. or yeah, a manager in, in the boardroom. Well, I, th I think it's, it's, there are similarities in many ways. Okay, um, one part <laughs> is the egocentric side of it. Yeah. You know, football side has that very high egocentric kind of me, me, me scenario. We want to be the best player, because best manager as well. But the hedge fund industry is the same thing. Mm -hmm. Potentially even worse <laughs> sometimes. But that behind the scene, because they're not in the front line, like a football player or manager, where there are really 80,000 people watching you and they see the mistake then and then. On the fund manager scenario, you don't see then and then if he's in a wrong trade or potential wrong allocation, etc. So he has more time to make that correction. And here you'll be scrutinizing middle the next day yeah. in the papers. So. There are similarities in top hedge fund guys and managers, etc. And the eagle side and the competitive side, there's very big similarity. Um, but when you were in the industry, myself as a football player, the other side was kind of pretty much, I knew was coming to me. Uh -huh. I was actually surprised that that was a little bit bigger than that side, but 
You have to accept it. Uh, that would be my final question. When you, when you look back, you having, having seen both worlds now and, and having had really a career in both, in both uh, industries, uh, when you look back, uh, let's say 40 years, when you were a little boy uh, close to or in Alton in, in, in the canton of Solothurn, would you have ever believed the career you, you, you would be doing? And, you know, as I said, not just in football, but in, in two different worlds and in Switzerland as, as well and as, in, as in London. Uh, it's quite an extraordinary life. Would you have dreamt about that? Never in my life. Never. Uh, I, will, I will, if, be honest, if I look back, uh, born and grew up in Alton in Dreamberg in a very small kind of town village, uh, I played football then in a small kind of town as well. I was a young kid playing after the school, before the school. I was like, sometimes even late to go to school, frankly saying, because of the football. I would never imagine I would go through this international, live alone, first of all, first up, come to Zurich, to a big, for us at that time, was the big city, playing for Grasshopper Zurich, a big club at that time as well. Going then to the international level, I played myself. It's a huge dream came through for me as a little boy, and I'm looking back, I even get my goosebumps talking about it because it's a beautiful path. And I think this is what actually football gives you. And this is something I love to, to do in the future for kids. We in Switzerland, we are fortunate. We are one of the richest countries in the world, but we still have certain infrastructure problems even during the football side. We're talking Africa, Asia, and all, all the parts. For them, the football is the escape site. It's the platform to integrate into society. And I think if we can do just a small part of that, that will help also the economy, that will help also the society and governments as well. Ramon Vega, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much.